Indiana's Benedict Matherin is second among rookies in points per game with 20.4 and first in three-pointers made with 2.8. That said, Ben's defense is a work in progress as while his size and athleticism give him a ton of upside on that end of the floor, he's still developing that aspect of his game. But in terms of the offensive end, not enough people are talking about the fact that the Indiana Pacers have a future superstar on their hands in the Canadian out of Arizona. With a Michael Jordan-esque archetype consisting of explosive hops and rangy, fundamental off-the-dribble shooting mechanics, the number 6 overall pick from last spring's draft is special. Pacer fans have been blessed to watch Reggie Miller and Paul George in their primes, but Benedict Matherin could be the Pacers' next franchise great player. Ever since first watching Matherin at the University of Arizona, I instantly saw a future all-star. That said, based off what I've seen from this man in the first handful of games at the pro level, I'm willing to take my analysis about this guy even further and commit to saying this, Benedict Matherin is a superstar player in the making. Before breaking down the Pacers' next franchise great, just 8.2% of you watching are subscribed, so hit the box and turn on notifications to stay updated on NBA analysis like this. Hit the like button to help this video spread. My handle on Instagram and Twitter is at dflowhoops, so go help your boy out by following me there. I'm really trying to get my numbers up on both those platforms, so a follow would be greatly appreciated. Again, that's at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. Back to the content. Of course, there's a long way to go in Benedict's development, and we'll get to the glaring weakness he has to to correct in order to make an all-star jump, let alone a superstar jump. Ben's not your typical multifaceted bucket getter, if that makes sense. Typically, three-level scores are only somewhat above average from each area, three levels meaning from beyond the three-point line, from the mid-range, and from the painted area. What makes Matherin unique is that he quite literally defines what the term three-level score truly means. Before we break down film on the elements in his bag which make him a special offensive talent already, there's one major liability with Benedict that shows up in the advanced stats, his lack of defense. Benedict's dead last in defensive real plus minus among shooting guards, he simply has to be better on this end of the court. In terms of defensive rating, comparing Matherin's 120 and a half clip to Paolo Boncaro's rookie best 111.6 clip, and you see exactly why Paolo's getting so much respect. Once Benedict's defense comes along, which I believe it will, given he was elite on this end at Arizona, Matherin will be an extremely scary player for opponents to face. With the Wildcats last year at the NCAA level, Matherin's 96.8 defensive rating ranked 13th best in the Pac-12, and his 36 steals were 16th most in the conference. Chase down blocks like this one on Kyle Lowry, flash Matherin's defensive timing. Despite the lack of defense at the pro level thus far, I still don't think Benedict's getting nearly enough spotlight from the basketball universe for his veteran-esque bucket-getting bag. He's been fairly consistent offensively for a rookie, but as he matures mentally, polishes up his footwork and handle, he should become even more consistent. At 6'6", 210, with a 6'9", wingspan, Benedict Matherin has a more than solid stature for a prototypical NBA shooting guard. While he's been damn good, Matherin hasn't been essentially flawless like Orlando's Paolo Boncaro, as Matherin's had a few inconsistent games. But my point in saying that is, everyone's going to go through a rough shooting night at some point, and given rough shooting nights are bound to happen, it's not that off game that defines them, but how they bounce back, which lets people know what they're really about. Against New Orleans, after Ben made just two of his eight shots and scored eight points, the first single-digit scoring game of his career, and only the second outing where he scored below 15 points. The very next time out against one of the hottest teams in the league in the Denver Nuggets, Matherin displayed his determination and IQ to adjust his mentality and individual game plan in response to a tough outing. Sure, opposing coaches aren't game planning for you as hard after an off night, but it's how an off night can affect a player mentally which can become troublesome. The very best of players, however, know how to find a specific mindset and lock in to quickly snap out of said funk. Matherin's now quickly snapped out of a short funk twice already in this young season, as just over a week ago, after scoring a season low at that point, 11 points against Washington, Matherin bounced back by scoring 32 points against Brooklyn. Benedict's assist to turnover ratio isn't nearly good enough right now for a high volume shot creator. However, one quality that seems extremely under control for a first year player in Matherin's bag 
is the man's pull-up shooting. It's obvious how calm, cool, and collected he is on walk-into-it transition pull-up jumpers like the one we're about to see, where he starts at the opponent's three-point line and takes it all the way across the timeline for a pull-up triple. Key in on three things here, his shifty dribbling base, his extremely quick one-two step into the pull-up distance bomb, and his robotically fundamental jump shooting follow-through. You're looking at a player who's hitting 43.7% of his threes, which is 8th best among all shooting guards. Matherin's aforementioned great size for a two guard allows him to operate in the dunker spot off slips and rolls. Watch the footwork to simultaneously catch and gallop into the lane for the Kevin Durant-esque mid-range J, with Jeff Green playing perfect defense. Here, Ben freezes Bruce Brown, who still stays right on Matherin's hip, but watch the offensive fortitude and soft touch to fend off Brown while showing off his floater game. Again, the Nuggets don't respect Matherin's jumper, so again, they don't pick him up in transition. DeAndre Jordan could have stepped up a bit more, but this stop on a dime after a full head of steam fundamental three-point shot is a shot you can tell has been extensively trained and worked on for many years now. It doesn't even matter if Matherin lands a bit awkwardly, because that follow-through is so damn nice to watch. Whether he can time it up or not, it always seems like the shot is going in because of that follow-through. You can tell Jeff Green wants to cut off this pull-up three. He can't help but respect Matherin's first step, and rightfully so. It's Ben's DeMar DeRozan-esque in-the-lane maneuvering, which make him shiftily unpredictable. If you like versatility, he can go from that Jordan slash DeRozan-esque playing style to a small ball prime Paul Millsap in a split second. A double screening action sees Matherin set a pin down, and after McConnell's drive, pop out to the top of the arc for a catch and shoot, and watch the slow down yet on point one two step into a stretch big man like triple. Same screen the screener zipper pin down type action takes place right here, but it's executed way better, as again Denver coach Mike Malone's game plan just doesn't respect Matherin's jumper. Even when Aaron Gordon thinks he's fully respecting that jumper by going over the top of Miles Turner's screen and initially pressing up, two off-handed hesitations force Gordon to back up the slightest bit. Aaron still gets a hand up, but Matherin's vertical jump just gives him too much elevation for Gordon to make an impact. Mixed with that shooting, rarely does a rookie have 99 overall speed, but that makes him damn dangerous. Matherin's stamina out-hustles all five nuggets right here, and despite not properly timing his jump to get as high up as possible, he still finds a way to spring up enough for the two-handed flush. This kid's a special athlete and an exceptional finisher. Again in the dunker spot, with Denver scrambling off a change of possession, Turner's bounce pass to the weak side sees Matherin fluidly catch and directly pivot. Aaron Gordon goes straight up, but also move that positioning down a bit, therefore fouling Benedict, who displays aerodynamic strength for the and one. Tough finish. Who does Benedict Matherin remind you of the most? Is he MJ? Is he DeRozan? Is he a combination of those two players and a stretch big? I want to know your answer to that question. Best comment down below gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winner is Corey82, who says, at this point, James Wiseman is the most detrimental player on the court. He looks lost, and you can totally see the frustration of his teammates every time he goes out of position, but you really can't put all the blame on a single player. They all need to step up their defense. As a man from South Etobicoke, I'm just glad the Raptors are holding their own so far. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.